Hi, welcome back. Um, it's about time I got this engine built now. Yeah? Uh, I'm going to crack on in this video. I'm going to um, replace all the camshaft, all the timing gears, all the equipment from the tools on, on what we're going to need to do it. And you don't need anything special. Um, uh, just a few measuring gauges, um, a dial gauge, and bits, but I'll have a walk, uh, a walk through that with you in a minute. And yeah, I'll. Uh, see if we can get this engine back together again right the engine's more or less where we left it it's had a fresh coat of paint on it and you can see i've i've painted on the i've painted where the uh where the fuel pump sits just so i can highlight them marks i will before i put it on I mean, it just this paint will just scratch off there i will um before i sit the fuel the fuel pump back on there i'll uh, clean that paint off but what we're going to need is gasket kit, your camshaft, any other bits that you're replacing. Um, this is for for talking down head bolts and stuff like that. Um, but that's not what we're going to use it for today. I'll show you what I'll use that for in a minute. You're going to need a measuring gauge, torch, pencils, ruler. You want a bit of wire, some 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 strongish wire at a bent at a right angle, a magnet to hold that, some tipex, a dial gauge and mount, some oil, pliers, pry bar, screwdriver, something to turn the engine over, and a little bit of masking tape, uh, some sealant for the um, timing case cover, and some brake cleaner. Just, oh, and rags yeah you're just gonna need a little bit of masking tape and I'll show you show you what that's for in a minute but that's it there's no specialist tools involved or anything like that a bit of patience and uh, that's about it really so first thing to go in is your camshaft make sure it's sparkly clean get some brake cleaner on there A good amount of cleaner on there. Give it a good wipe down. You don't want any any bits of grit on there or anything like that. Um, and then you're going to need your oil. Normally I would wear rubber gloves on this, but as we're in the middle of a pandemic, these things are impossible to buy. Give that a good clean out. And just give it a quick inspection. Make sure there's nothing. Although it's brand new, it doesn't mean there wasn't a full manufacturer in it. So. Worth giving this a good looking over. Make sure there's nothing on there whatsoever. Get covered in it. Right. So I'll get you in a better position so you can see what I'm doing. Then, like I said, this isn't. Other people will have different ways of doing things. This is the way I've been taught to do it. It's not necessarily the correct way of doing it, but it's what I've been taught. So, see if I can get you into view there. Right. Make sure you're putting the right end in. So the end of the keyway, that's the end that sticks out. Get the oil. Also, before you do, make sure these bearing surfaces inside Make sure you're giving them a good clean out, a good white round. Just check there's no there's no imperfections on there. And just uh, try and get you in the view. You are going to get get oily hands doing this. Make sure you wipe the oil all the way around. Wipe so far. And carefully, carefully slide it in. You might just need to wiggle it a little bit. There's no rush, just take your time. Get it in as far as you've oiled it, and then stop. Leave this end, leave the end of this till last. Because you've got to, you, you're manhandling it, you might, there's no point uh, covering yourself in oil, is there? 
unnecessarily any more than what you have to. Give the whole thing a good a good lube up and we'll get that in a bit more. Come on, in here. Right, now we'll just put some oil around this last bit. You might be able to get your fingers inside where the um, oil filled tube normally bolts onto. That's it, just slot that into there. If it's time to push it too far because it will just continue going in. So just leave it sort of flush with the end there. Right, give it a break. Now I'm successfully covered in oil completely. Let's shut that door, see if we can see it. Right, check it turns freely, you shouldn't hear any grinding noises or, or anything like that, it should just smooth round and uh, that's that. Right, next bit you're going to need, I'll uh, is the uh, retaining plate on the end. I'll try and get you in a, in a let me just pause you there, hold on. Right, you need your retaining plate. Uh, you can't really put this on wrong, I don't think. So, if I move you back a bit, you might get slightly better view of what I'm doing. Oh my god. Right, we're getting there. Apologies for the shoddy camera work. Give a good clean. And it should come up all shiny and new, more or less. This is where your, your brake cleaner comes in handy. And plenty of rags. The glory of having uh, four kids is I've always got plenty of rags. If the, it's got their marks on it there, but as you can see, if you flip it round the other side, so it makes it don't make no big difference which way round it goes. You check it for signs of wear that side has been in has been quite worn and it's got little marks on it there so we'll put that to the outside um, put some oil on you can't over lubricate while you're, while you're doing this and that just slots into there like so And your little nuts uh, and your locking tabs. Screw that in. This just stops your camshaft from, from moving too far out now because while well, that's on there, you can't you can't pull it out. Although it can still still drop in there. Do that finger tight for now. Uh, oh, another tool you're going to need is a hammer. Right. I'll show you what that's for in a second. Get your sockets. Check I've got the right size socket to start with, that helps. 
and tighten that up. Don't force it in, you don't need to go full, full Hercules on it. And just uh, if you've got a punch, it's a bit better for this. Lock the tabs over. That's a little bit. Of Right, it's that locked in. Uh, next job. Double check again that it spins freely. Every time you put something on, basically just check it, give it a spin, and check it's gonna uh, it's gonna spin freely. No resistance, no clunking, no grinding, uh, or anything like that. Now, next job is to get, uh, get the timing gear on. Uh, the, the sprocket. And a socket for that. So, I put this in before I started filming. I just put it in just to check it and put it, that everything was going to going to be alright, so I have actually marked it where it needs to go, but you need to get your little key, your woodruff key, or whatever you want to call it, slot that in there, like so, so I put a little tip X mark on there where it, where it sits, you've got to be careful with this little sod because it can just fall off, you see I just pushed the can back in there then, you don't want it disappearing down into the sump, and then you have to take the sump off. So you've got your big washer, your um, and your locking tabs. You slot that on uh, as well. I assume that was an original camshaft that was in there. The new camshafts, the the thread. It's different on the nut on the end, so you will have to saw some nut for it. This is uh, it's one. Luckily, I've got a I've got a, a specialist near me that, that does every type of nut you can ever imagine. So just slot that in like so. Move that out of the way. Get your. Oh, them two, them two little nuts on the back there, they're seven sixteenths in old money. This is a five eighths nut that's going on there now. Give it a bit of a, a bit of power, not excessive. It's not going anywhere, and then. Uh, Locking tabs over. I probably wouldn't if you've got if you've got the multi spline socket. I probably wouldn't fully tighten this up and put the locking tabs over because you might you might need to adjust it round um, a couple of keyways to get it perfect. Nice and snug, that's not going anywhere. Still turning freely.
That's on there nice. It's not going anywhere in a hurry. Right. So next job. One of the last jobs you're gonna you're gonna find is actually putting the um uh skew gear in there. Because you're gonna make sure your valve timing and everything's set up before you can before you put that in because it'll, it'll just be wrong otherwise but see if I can get it in that's where we're, we're at camshaft is in nothing special so next job is going to be I'm putting the putting the guys in there so I'll go and get them I'll give them all a good clean up with the brake cleaner because they come like with it, with it, it almost feels waxy, um, like oil on them, so they don't corrode. So I'll go and get them, give them a good clean up with the brake fluid, uh, brake cleaner, and a, a rag, and we'll slot them in. Right, this is another really simple job. There's nothing really overly complicated about this at all. Um, so you've got your guide, roller, follower, tap it, whatever you want to call it. Your screw and washer that holds it all into place. So first thing is the guide. Get a bit of oil on there. Just I do like to make, make sure everything's uh, oiled up before it uh, before it all goes together. And just slide that down. Nicely into there. Roughly so it lines up roughly where the hole is. Then your roller goes down there. Plenty of oil on it. Don't be scared of the oil. Try not to dribble it all over the all over your shoe like I just did there. And slot. Now these you know they have got these are marked, so they've just got an F on it for front, so obviously that's the front of the engine. Um, this, the, the original ones, it actually says front on there, it's got written on, so just make sure that little F goes to the front. Yeah, and just cover it in oil. F to the front. That should just slide down there nicely. Get your little nut. Uh, or your washer as well. Don't forget that. Uh, then you need a rag because I can't grip anything with my hands now. Rags are vitally important for this job. These are 13 mil. Check that it's going through the hole all right. Yeah, now as before, spin it over. But what we'll do is push that down, and then we'll make sure that's going up and down perfectly fine. Perfect. Right, replace the uh, replace. Repeat that another seven times, and you've you've got all them in. Try and keep everything tidy as you're going along. Uh, yeah, I'll get them in and uh, come back to you when it's done. Now they're all in there. I'll see if I can show you. And all moving up and down freely. No resistance whatsoever turning the uh, turning the camshaft over. Now 
what we need to do is set the EP mark on the crankshaft this way you're going to need your tipex and probably a torch if I can find what I've just done with it oh wow I only had that a few seconds ago and it's disappeared right there right get the right torch on right on your um, on your flywheel there's a few marks there's top dead center there's 13 degrees before top dead center 14 degrees before and ep which stands for exhaust port so what we need to do is line that up you you got should have mentioned this to start with really you need one of them little pointers you cannot do this job without that pointer because you'll never get you can't guess it you'll never get it right it'll always be out you can buy them um, there was somebody on eBay not so long ago um, had a load of uh, new old stock pointers um, so get some of them yeah. and then Line it up, that's why you need your tipex, so you can mark it, you can see it properly. Line that up with that on there, so it's bang on perfect on there. Make sure you're looking at it from the right angle as well, because if you're looking at it from different angles, it might not quite line up properly. Um, it, now, now that's there, you, you, you leave it there, don't touch it, don't, do not disturb it now. That's, that stays there pretty much through most of the process. Um, so the next next tool you're going to need is your gauge and your mount. And this is going to... You're going to use this to um, find the exhaust valve peak on cylinder 1. So I'll get set up, get that set up properly, and uh, I'll show you how to find that. Right, we've got this, um, we've got the gauge set now. Ignore the markings that's on there for now, ignore, ignore whatever it's saying at the minute. But what you'll, you'll need to do is just stick your finger down the hole and turn the, turn the, crank, uh, the camshaft sorry, until you can feel it virtually at the top. You, you'll know when it's virtually there. Just, just so you know where that is. Then set, so I move my hands out of the way. Set your dial gauge up, but set it so it's right in the center of the little, there's, there's a little hole in, in the follower. So it's just, just sitting in there. And what you, you can do now is adjust it. As I turn it, obviously it's still going up. I'll turn it right back like that though. Right, so as it gets to the absolute peak of its travel, which is there, on that peak you've got four degrees of travel before it starts going, going back again. Four degrees is not a lot. I've literally just moved it a couple of centimetres. Right, so set it up somewhere where you know roughly where it is, look. And then you need your tipex. You need that. What do you need? You need your tipex. You need your magnet, your pointer, and a pencil. Let's come around this side now. Let's see if I can set you down where you can see. So, get your tipex. You know now roughly where you want to be. You can see where I've already laid a little cheeky practice from. So, oh, I can't grip it, I've had that much oil on my hands, I can't grip the lid now. Right, oh, there we go. Get your tipex and just double grip mark on there. You're not being precise, quite wide, so you've got plenty of leeway there. Also, just put a mark on there as well, put some tipex on there as well. You're going to need to put pencil marks on this later, so... 
Right. It's an old school trick, but it does the job. Now with your magnet, this is just an old um, old speaker magnet. You put that so it's as vertical as you can get it by eye, close up to the, to the um, it's just a couple of millimetres off. Just as vertical as you can by eye, like so. Make sure your pencil's sharp. Give your tipex time to dry. Right. Now, as as we move it, so that as we move it round, it gets to that flat spot there, which is just short of 0.3 of a millimetre. 0.28 of a millimetre. So what we'll do is move it back. We'll keep, we'll keep going. Oh, sorry, if I get this in, I'll start again. If I get this in shot now, I'll try and get that camera on there. Sorry, I was that busy looking what I was doing. I can't get you into shot and into focus. Cool, man. Silly camera. Right, we've got some flash on now. So now you can't see bugger all. Right, actually perfect though. Right, you can just see there where it's on 0.28 of a millimetre. So we turn, turn it ever so slightly, just really, really slowly. So it starts going back and then count one, two, three, we'll go back four, four, there. Now come back round and put a mark. Always make sure you're marking the same side as on your on your pointer. Put a little mark there, or two little marks there. Now we come back, be never so careful not to move that at all. Uh, your pointer, be never so careful. Let's turn that stupid flash off. There we go. Oh, now we're in focus. Look. So now we're, we've got that side marked. Now go back again till it stops. Oops. There you go, point eight. Now move it the opposite direction. So what you're trying to do is find the flat spot, where it starts, where it ends. So if we go, the opposite direction now, so it starts moving one, two, three, four. So what we've got now around here, I'm so, ever so sorry if I'm not being really clear and focused on this, I'm trying my best, but we've put another mark there. Right, so now what you can do you can see the marks there. You measure between them two marks and wherever the dead centre is between them two marks, that is the absolute flat spot, centre of the flat spot on the top of the cam. That is where your exhaust needs to be open. So what you need to do is measure that. I'll measure it with this. Uh, oh. So, I'm really, I really am crap with this. Measure that there between them two spots, and that's ten point six nine millimeters. Get you in view again. Ten point six nine. Let's put you on there. You might be able to see a little bit better then. I, I really do apologise for the shoddy camera work. But it's doing your head in. But it's just trying to get. Trying to get up close so you can really see what I'm doing because this it does confuse a lot of people. 1.69, new mathematicians out there. Oh, 10.69, sorry. We'll go there and there. Oh, we've got. Right, so we measure it now. I ain't got the camera in my hand. I can see that it's just short of 11mm. So, 
five and a half mil is uh, is where you want to be. You could probably just do it by eye, really, but that's. 5.5 so we come off the mark there 5.5 is the absolute dead center so while that marks while that mark is still on there we can put that back lay it in we can put a little mark on there and that's it, you can take that off. So you know that mark needs to line up with that mark. Now, double checking you haven't moved your, your crank. I think the torch again is getting dark in here now. Yep, that's still on the EP mark. That's lined up with that mark although it doesn't look it from the angle we can move that away so we know if the cranks on the exhaust port mark where it needs to be fully open so at that stage don't expect your piston to be at the top I'll turn that light off again don't expect the piston to be at the top because it won't be it'll be, uh, be on its way up little bits bits of cloth in there it'll be on its way up so that is where the exhaust and the ep mark is where the valve the exhaust valve needs to be fully open right so then you can put your timing chain on be careful not to move anything and hoping that it all lines up perfect. Now, when that's on, give it a bit of tension there. See what tension you got on there. Perfect. Take the nuts out that hold that tensioner into place. Like so. Tensioner. Been careful. Been careful not to explode it all over the floor. Oh, it's supposed to be. Oh, there we go. Right. Clamped all the way up like so. It's a bit tricky when your hands are all slippy and everything's falling apart. So, tensioner on the chain like so. Make sure everything's on where it should be. This will try and escape because it's got, it's got that spring on it. And uh, obviously you've got a Try and get that bolt into there. So it will try and do a runner on you. That little spring clip goes up, up over the top of there like so. That's on there. That's one there. Like I said, if you've got the multi, uh, the, the sprocket with the uh, the multi um, the splines and multi keyways in there, sorry, you might need to do this a couple of times and just move it round so you get the perfect keyway because um, you might go and just go to put your chain on and it won't line up properly. With the with the teeth, you might be uh, a tooth out or or something. So you just have to. That's why I said don't necessarily do that until until after. Uh, and then you know 
クラシックブルー Make sure that's tensioned up there Right, tighten that up Sorry, it might be a bit of a long winded video this, but I'm trying to get it all in one video. Um, and it's real time as I'm doing it, I'm not, I'm not going to mess around editing it or anything like that. Making sure you're not snagging that spring in there. Tighten that up. Double check that's that's free to to move. Um, and that's that. That's hopefully that's your timing done. But what we will do now is spin the engine over. Yeah. Double check you can see what I'm doing there. Right, let's move you out. Right, I'm going to spin the engine over a couple of revolutions now. Oh. So these starting dogs come in handy. Be warned that spinning the engine over, um, if you've got oil in the sump, it will pump the oil up out there. Out of, out of uh, various orifices. We'll do another, another revolution round. Checking while you're at it that you're not getting big slack spots on your cam chain. So, hopefully, if I've done this correctly, it'll not be the first time I've had to redo it. Right, we're lined up there. It's on its upward stroke. We'll get the torch. And I can tell you now because I've just looked at it. That. That's nowhere near the EP mark on there. If I, uh, let me just check what I've done there. Check that I'm actually on the... I shall. I'll just spin it around again. This is because... Torch. Oh. Line that mark up there. Smidgen. There. And where are we on there? Look. Ah, perfect. Look at that. Perfect. It needed to go round another revolution. So, yeah, EP mark, your mark's lined up on there, just turn that off, uh, and that's it, that's your, that's, that's your, your valve timing done, that's just, uh, I wouldn't, don't put your timing case on, just yet, wait till you've got the head on, everything else on, then recheck it again using the valves, Um just to make sure once you've got everything together you don't want to you don't want to um you don't want to put all that on to have to take it off again so just leave all that off for now 
Um, I really got worried then when that when that mark didn't line up. I really thought, oh, no, I've messed something up here. It can happen. You, know, you can be uh, a two for so out, but that's quite a way out. Um, it just needed going round. Uh, sometimes because as the chain moves round, you, you'll get more slack. But no, that's fine. That's fine. Really happy with that. Right, what I'll do next is uh, the skew gear. I'll show you how I've um, how I how I sort these marks out on there for the skew gear to drop in. That has obviously got to mesh with your camshaft in there, which can be tricky. But you have to bear with it, you have to persevere. And uh, once it's done, it's done. So, right. I'll, uh, in fact, I'll just show you now. I'll just, just get on and do it. So, what you need to do is you need the exact center of that bolt there. And if I can get this gauge to turn on you need it's a bit tricky with one hand the exact center between them two bolts which on this is 91.8 so you might get, you find the you calculate the I'm, I'm absolutely useless at maths so i'm not going to try and work it out in fact in that right yeah, because of how this works, look, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. I'll start again properly. Use use that end because I just realised as I was as I was doing that one, I realised this last I realised last time and I forgot. Um you do it that way around. It catches on that nut if you don't. That's what I was trying to say. Right, which then comes out at seventy seven point nine. Work out the exact half of that. I'll try and get you shot again. And then mark it there. So what you've got, I'll go over it again, is the exact centre of that bolt hole. The exact centre of them two bolt holes. That gives you that, that horizontal line across there. And then you need to, to measure 20 degrees off there. Which is where this comes in handy. So what, what I've done with it, what you do with this, I'll move that so I can actually see, is you line up your zero and your 180 on the horizontal mark. And then if I can line this up perfectly and then you need to mark off it looks out a line on the camera but it's not it's 20 degrees and 200 degrees and then that gives you that's what you need your ruler for that gives you that line across there so there's your 20 degrees there's your horizontal there's your 20 degrees. This is where you need to line up your skew gear for the drive pump. And this is where you need your little bit of masking tape. On top of the, um, the, the little shaft that goes into the bottom of the pump, that goes into the gear and into the bottom of the pump, you've got a master key there a master spline sorry a big one and you've got an inverted one there so you need to find the exact center of there the inverted keyway and the spline and the exact center of the master spline you put the masking tape on so you can draw on it and then draw a line between the two so when your gear goes in that needs to line up perfectly with that line straight across there if you can do that, your fuel timing will be perfect. Or near as damn it. 
without because I cannot for the love of no money get the proper tool for doing the job you can't buy it I don't know who nobody seems to remanufacture it or what you, the only people that's got them is old boys in sheds and Land Rover specialists that have been going for donkey's years same as the skew gear itself you, you can't buy them you occasionally get one second hand but you can buy the bush the um, the brass bush for it but that's it you can't buy that it will be the death of the Land Rover not being able to get simple parts like that but I suppose it, it costs that much to produce and there's that little demand for it there's no point there's no money in it so nobody's going to reproduce it so yeah that's 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 your timing sorted let's see if we can um, get this is where it gets tricky trying trying to drop this gear in there especially holding the camera with one hand and trying to line that bush up that's why you need one of one of them just so you can get in there you try not to scratch the surface too much so you can get in the hole there and just move just turn that that bushing round so you can line the hole up but it's going to be tricky for you to see but i'll try and get this in there and lined up because what you you've got that's your master spline so that needs to be pointing Ah, there's a thing that I haven't mentioned. Actually, before I do, I'm rushing ahead of myself because I'm thinking that much about the camera. What you need to do now... If my memory serves me correctly... Is take your tools off the top of the engine block that are dropping in there for a start. Turn your engine till you get. Oh, there's your marks. You don't get in focus. I've gone too far. If you go too far, spin it all the way around again. Right, just bear with me a second. Right, there we are. 13 degrees. Before top dead centre, you can see the, the top dead centre mark there. You've got two marks on there, 14 degrees and 13 degrees. Make sure it's on the 13 degrees. If you go past that mark, if you go past it, go all the way around again. Don't try and get the screwdriver in there and pry it back because you can put the timing out on this end then. So, yeah, make sure that's bang on the mark. Now, we need to line that gear up in there. Yeah, best way of doing this where I can show you. I think I'm just gonna have to do this half blind and with one hand. You can, if you've got chunky fingers, you can just sort of slot your finger in there. Make sure it slots in. And then you want to get it, oh well, bugger me, I might have even got it right first time, that would be a change. Right, well, you do, what I've done is got the master spline, so it's facing more or less down, and as it's slotted in, it's, uh, it's lined up there. But what we'll get now, because well, it's no point, we'll take that little grub screw out there. I remember, like I said before, don't lose that little bugger. Slippery little sod. Get your fine pointy tool. You're not going to be able to see, and I'm going to have to put the camera down, but in there, because I'm only going to have to hold, hold the torch, the little hole um, where the grub screw goes through into that, um, into that brass, uh, brass bush. You need to line it up, you need to line the hole up in the bush with the hole, hole there. And uh, I can't do it whilst filming, so I'll uh, I'll do that. All I'm going to use 
is a little pointy tool. Carefully, without trying to gouge anything. Right, the little grub screws in, which means that that's lined up perfect there where it needs to be. You might have a little bit of play in it, but don't worry too much about it. Then you need this. Slot this in, it will only go in one way. And as you can see there, we are out. So it's all got to come out again. So we'll take that out. Take the little grub screw out. You might not need to take it out all the way. And we'll probably one tooth out on the, on there. So if we grab that, it's a really tricky little bugger to get. I'll take that out, make sure that's not just still gripping it. Put that on top of there. Right, pliers in. Pull it out, turn it around a bit. Once it's out, once you've got it out so far, you can do it with your finger if you've got chunky enough fingers. And just, it'll slot, it'll slot in, it'll take a bit of wiggling. That don't look far out, but it's really hard to say. I might have gone a bit, I think I've gone a little bit too far that time. So we'll put it back out again. Turn it one tooth. Can't get my finger in it. Come on. And then check, check your holes in there. I'll see if I can uh, get you on that chair, and then you might be able to see what I'm doing. Whoops! You might be able to see the ceiling in me. <laughs> Get your little torch in there. Just gently trying to spin that bush. So it's not spinning either way. But I can see that is a two count. Spin that again. There'll be a little hole there somewhere. There. You can just sort of hold it there and have a peer down. That, see that little bit, it makes so much difference. It's out again by one tooth. Find it again. It seems to me this slippery little sod ain't been very warm. Still wildly out. Right, so what I'll do, this is going to take forever, this filming this like this. So it is literally a trial and error. Trying to get everything lined up perfectly. So I'll get that lined up.
Right, finally, at last, it's lining up as close as it's ever going to get. Um, there's an extra mark on there because it seemed no matter what I could, I was doing, I could only get it to line up with the horizontal or ten degrees, which is the uh, the middle line. Um, but what I had to keep doing was turning the engine over till I was on the right stroke um, and get it lined up. See that's injecting in both of them, both of them um, uh, followers are down, so both valves will be closed, and now it's finally lined up. So you just got to be patient, bear with it. If you can't get it lined up, turn the engine round again, line up your thirteen degrees, try it again, uh, scratch your head for a bit, go and have a cup of tea, pull it all out, do it again. It's an absolute nightmare, but. Uh, it's took me about half an hour to do it, 45 minutes to do it, um, but it's in there. So you don't forget to take your tape off once it's all lined up. And now your pump can go on, um, unless you want to just leave it off, I mean, uh, until you've got the head, I suppose, now that, uh, get that in the right. Spline. Oh, what I also had to keep doing every now and again, I was struggling to get it to go down, is you need to pull it out and just turn the um, the shaft for the um, oil pump. It might stop you just slotting that down if it's not quite lining up right. But, yeah, I'm happy at that. You're never going to get it 100% bang on perfect, but that's why you can adjust the pump to suit it. So... Uh, yeah, I'm hoping now that it'll all adjust up right. I mean, if, if it is wrong, if you are slightly out, even when it's in the engine, you can take the pump off again and, and take the oil filter housing off again and, and just try. Just try again. It's, it is a bit of trial and error, but we got there in the end. Thank God. Right, next thing I'm going to do then, because that's, that's, that about sums up the timing for now. Like I said, it will all be rechecked again before um, uh, before the head goes on. And uh, yeah, what I'll do now, if obviously if the engine has been spanned around a few times now. So I'm going to check that. Oh, I'm pulling the engine around the garage. It's still all going to line up. Um, so let's get this on. I've just gone past it, so I've got to go around again now. Right, get it on the next upward stroke. Which it's coming up. Try and get you in view there, it's a bit tricky. A little bit at a time. That's on the P mark there. You can't really see with this light of the camera. That's them marks there, they are lined up, doesn't look it on the camera. Uh, and then we go round, find the 13 degree mark which is there and that can't really see master splines as close as you're ever going to get to 20 degrees on there and that's me happy now the whole engine can go back together it's easy from now on head to head back on um, Oil pump housing back on, fill tube, all that lot. That's fairly self explanatory. If you got to this far and you need a video on how to put that back together again, how did you get this far, basically? Uh, so, yeah, I'll come back in the next video, hopefully, with it uh, all built up back together again. And by the end of the next video, hopefully, we'll be able to uh, fire it up and see if it worked. 
yeah fingers crossed it's uh, it's made me scratch my head so far so yeah well uh I'm just trying to think. I've got a double checking, always running through my head if there's anything I've missed. Constantly, all the time. Uh, I always second guess and double, triple check everything. And but yeah, everything's in. Everything's moving as it should be. Right, happy days. I'll get all this back together again. See about getting it back in. Thanks for watching. See you next time.